Hey, what's going on, everybody? Millsy here, and today we're going to talk about some star film. Sometimes it doesn't just work. Sometimes it just works. Now, Starfield is a game that's going to be released by BGS, Bethesda Game Studios, and typically this developer. I haven't had any issues with aside from Fallout 76. I've been playing BGS games since I can remember. Uh, I've been gaming pretty much my whole life. You know, anything from like Morrowind, Oblivion, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, Skyrim, the, all the Fallout games. Even my fiance loves the Fallout games. Um, Fallout 76, though, was something to behold in its own i'm not going to get into every little detail about fallout 76 but it just works it did leave a bad taste in my mouth when it came to what they would showcase versus the reality of what we're getting and this isn't something that bethesda is only known for this is something that most developers are are doing now they kind of cherry pick what they want to show you and say look how awesome this game is it's a sales tactic it obviously works i mean look at the hype that's built around this game even i'm hyped for this game i will play it i have pre-ordered it uh but uh, I also have to keep myself grounded in my expectations as to what I'm going to get. Now, granted, Fallout 76 was a massive multiplayer game where you're dumping a lot of players and assets into a server. And then that server has to basically deal with everything. And, and um, w when you have a server that's also uh, kind of dealing with a lot of players, uh, you, you're going to get a lot of, you know, some graphical bugs and there was more than enough bugs to go around in Fallout 76, but bugs happen on release, right? Like it just happens. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's how I see the developer handle the negative criticism, uh, is what makes me judge that developer for example if you look at hello games and in, in no man's sky no man's sky was touted as this incredibly uh open world or open universe game and in all rights it is but it was just littered with so many bugs and a lack of really any substance in the game you would basically just get a ship land on a planet mine resources and then what oftentimes you'd see dinosaurs or different like uh alien creatures essentially break dancing you know on their heads like spinning in circles and stuff and uh you know that <laughs> that uh was not necessarily something that i think was showcased when they were showing all the gameplay footage um, so I, I think you can kind of see what i what i'm getting at here is developers like to cherry pick uh, what they're showing you and at the time that I'm recording this this is after the Starfield direct video that came out and after IGN had about an hour of, of gameplay uh, with Starfield itself um, it is known that uh, they were jumping through multiple predetermined saves so it wasn't like they were playing from the very start and just had an hour to do whatever they want whether it was to go through the story or just kind of explore around um, so I just want to I just want to go ahead and point out that al although I am very excited about Starfield uh, there are there there is a big part of me that's that's kind of keeping me grounded in this whole thing uh saying hey it, it might not be that great uh you know on on release uh you know with bugs you know bethesda has a nickname themselves bug thesda um but i am really excited for the concept of this game and i really feel like if any studio can really deliver on something like this it is bethesda right uh bethesda has always delivered incredible stories 
and have given people these incredibly immersive worlds. I mean, look at Skyrim, for example. I mean, Skyrim is still played today by many people. And a lot of times when people jump into Skyrim, they just jump in, don't really play the main story and they just go and do their own thing, right? Like it's almost like No Man's Sky as well. No Man's Sky has gone through so many different patches, had their redemption story and uh people just jump in do what the hell they want and that's that and you can get hundreds or thousands of hours sometimes in these games without even completing the story uh i for one have completed the no man's sky story once and then i have a lot of hours that are just dedicated to just nothing just running around doing my own thing and and that in itself is fun and i i hope that this game can deliver on that kind of a scale based off of ign's hour with the game it kind of seems like they're touting it the fact that yes you can do a lot of different things without even completing the story so there might be a a mass population of the player base that doesn't even complete the story but yet puts in hundreds of hours and i think that that's really cool i think that to me is something that shows that you have an immersive world now something i do want to bring up that i that i did notice in starfield direct or i guess the better terminology would be did not notice would be the ships flying in and out of an atmosphere it does seem like when you warp drive to a system you have to select your landing site and there was a little bit of a snippet in this in the starfield direct where it showed that they were going to uh new atlantis and they were selecting their landing site and then it just went to a cutscene of them landing on on the site so i almost wonder if there's like a loading screen there you don't actually get to go in and kind of land wherever you want and explore wherever you want what worries me about uh predetermined landing zones is it gives the developer the ability to give you the, the fish tank uh as i like to call it which is this mass open world very similar to like you know let's just say skyrim for example but you can't just keep walking and walking and walking until you just you know there, there's nothing there there's 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 a fish tank wall or impassable terrain that they try to keep you in within these boundaries, right? Uh, no Man's Sky allows you to seamlessly go in and out of the atmosphere, land wherever you want, hyperdrive around the around the planet, or not really hyperdrive, but like pulse drive, I guess, around the planet, and then dive in wherever you want. Uh, this game, I have not seen any footage or anyone talk about, especially in, in the direct video, uh, where you can seamlessly go in and out of an atmosphere. It almost seems like you kind of have to choose what landing site uh, you want to go to. And then there could be a loading screen and then you pop in there and then perhaps you're in this kind of fish tank area because when they were landing at New Atlantis, uh, I believe there was three different landing sites that they were able to choose from, which was New Atlantis. And then it had some that were kind of scattered around. And I think those are kind of like the areas that you could land that are exploration areas. Um, but there is a lot of footage where, uh, you know, it, it shows a ship just landed in a random spot. Now, is that random spot one of those predetermined areas or is that random spot a true random spot where you can fly your ship within the atmosphere and and just fly around and land wherever you want? And that planet is truly explorable. Now, I haven't been able to find anything regarding that. When they were talking about outposts, you can build outposts almost anywhere you want. Now, that's a very, very carefully chosen word there. Does that mean if I wanted to build on the opposite side of Atlantis, can I even get there like the opposite side of the planet or do I have to stay in kind of this fish tank zone? Um, but yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's kind of my main big worry uh, about the game, but it's not really going to stop me from 
picking it up, making content on it. I want to see what Starfield's all about. Uh, I'm going to play through the story. I love the fact that there is ship customization. That's been something that people have been asking for forever in No Man's Sky. Uh, and Bethesda is doing it in Starfield, which I think is cool. You can get crew ships. You can get crew on your ships, uh, which adds more life uh, into just what's around you at any given time, which I think is really cool. And they all have their own kind of unique story or arc that you can kind of get to know or play through as a quest line. I think that's really cool as well. The next thing I want to touch base on is the gameplay footage versus the kind of free look footage. Uh, when they were showing us uh, a lot of the gameplay footage in, in the direct video, a lot of it was either in like slow motion or for like a second to a second and a half. Uh, so there were some combat scenes which were looked really awesome. Um, but for the most part, a lot of it was just like slow motion. Still images are in a menu uh, that that does kind of worry me a little bit because I mean, I can't help but think back to how developers cherry pick what's going in. Uh, it, it's very clear that they have just a mass amount of footage that they could cram into this Starfield direct video and to choose a lot of still images and slow-mo some footage that is probably like a second long to make it like a second and a half and then go to free camera footage, uh, which you can tell the difference very clearly between their free camera footage and the actual gameplay video um, when they're clearly in a camera mode that's gameplay the clothing and stuff isn't as glossy it's not super shiny it's it's more flat whereas in the free camera you're getting all these really cool angles and everything looks all shiny and pretty and all that stuff which leads to really cool cinematic shots so as a you know a content creator that's pretty sweet you can get some pretty cool screenshots uh but i just couldn't help but notice the lack of fluid i guess gameplay aside from some of the combat scenes which again they did look pretty cool um this the point of this video isn't necessarily to deter you from getting starfield but to maybe hold expectations stay ex stay excited because I, if i i'm really hoping that this would be in my opinion bethesda's kind of redemption story kind of redeeming themselves from the mess of fallout 76 because i have not touched any bethesda game since granted there hasn't been a whole lot released right but uh it just put such a bad taste in my mouth and i'm not really a one strike and you're out type person but it was how they handled a multitude of series of events uh throughout fallout 76 that really for the lack of a better term pissed me off uh <laughs> I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are down below, what you're excited for most about this game. And again, if you know of anything about going seamlessly in and out of the atmosphere, like flying your own ship in and out of the atmosphere and landing wherever you want on these planets, uh, let me know. I, I'd, I'd love to either see that video or article or whatever. But yeah, just let me know what you guys think down below and I will catch you guys on the next video. Take it easy.